my focus all this week is on are on uh, 8A small businesses, but it's, the tips I provide are useful for anybody in the federal market and as you move forward. Um, one of the things I want you to keep in mind as you're trying to maximize your visibility with federal buyers is just understanding how sh uh, huge that um, the number of buyers are out there, that pool of buyers are, are out there that you might be reaching for. So in the federal government, there's hundreds of thousands of buyers. DOD alone has about 185,000 people who are in the acquisition uh, jobs, uh, you know, and that doesn't include people who are in the program office or the users doing the work, right? They're all part of the buyer pool, but just in acquisition alone, there's 185,000 in DOD. Imagine what that's like for federal agencies across the board. Um, and one of the challenges we have here is that you're never going to be able to knock on all of their doors. You just can't do that. I don't care how big your team is. You're still never going to be able to knock on more than 1%. So 99% of those federal buyers out there need to find you. And, and you know, we're not obviously going to sell to every buyer because each buyer buys something a little different. But I would still say that 99% of your potential buyers, the people who want to buy what you sell, still are going to have to find you because you're not going to have the time or the resources to knock on their door. And if they can't find you, then how can they buy from you, right? They can't. If people can't buy from you, they can't. I mean, if buyers can't find you, they can't buy from you. Um, and that's something really important to keep in mind. And it's driving the whole training that I'm doing today. Today, we're going to cover down on four things. First off, I just want to remind you why what I'm going to teach today is so important. So why you should be listening to me on this topic today. The second thing I'm going to do is to um, walk you through how a buyer shortlists sellers, right? And I'm going to talk about first, what is a shortlist? And then how do they shortlist uh, sellers like you in the federal market? Third thing we're going to cover down are the top mistakes that we make and we make these in DSBS, which just completely cut the legs out from underneath our visibility body, if you will, right? We need to fix these mistakes immediately. And then the last thing I'm gonna wrap up with just giving you five takeaway tips for uh, what you can do very quickly to improve your visibility. And when I say improve your visibility, literally 100% improvement on your visibility. And, and you'll see, uh, as I go through the training today, so many of us are invisible. And it goes back to that thing I just said a second ago, if the buyers can't see you or find you, then how can they buy from you? They can't. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market, and since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Part of the process goes from A to Z, and when you follow that process, you're going to have repeatable, predictable results. And that's what I want for you. Um, I want to just make sure I'm thanking the sustaining members of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. We do a lot of uh, work out here. We put a lot of content, content out there, a lot of eBooks and trainings. We've done almost 300 trainings in the last 15 months, 30 minutes each, right? 150 hours of just pure training, just like you're going to get today. And um, it's coming from the generosity of the sustaining members, people like you and me. And we just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, everybody across the nation from Guam and Northern Mar Mariana Islands, uh, all the way out to U.S. Virgin Islands and every single state in between. So many people benefit from what you're enabling us to do. All right. So let's dive into the meat of today's training with um, why you should listen to me, right? And why you should listen closely to today's topic. First off, what I'm sharing with you is not my opinion. I wish I had known this when I was running my two businesses in the GovCon space, um, you know, 20 years ago or you know up until 2017 i wish i had known what i'm teaching but it won't it was once i got out and i started the govcon chamber of commerce and i started talking with hundreds of contracting officers and not retired ones which are great but people who are actually in the job people who were trying to find small businesses uh, to support their sources sought requirements that were coming out etc and i was trying to get their opinion on how they do their job and how we might be missing them as industry and so the things I'm sharing with you are their tips. Here's how we could find you industry better. And here's how we look for you. Um, DSBS is the tool I'm going to primarily talk about. I'll give you a couple of other tips uh, today, but primarily I'm diving into the dynamic small business search. And it's because it is the number one market research tool out there. It is the tool used by the 99%. 1% is you getting out there and knocking on doors and some one-off type things. And then 99% is SAM and DSBS. They make up your small business profile. They are basically one tool. And when a buyer comes in there, a market researcher comes into DSBS, looks for a company like yours, 
This is where you're making your first impression. You're making multiple impressions on a buyer before they even introduce themselves to you. Before you're ever aware of them, you're making impression after impression after impression. And DSPS is the first impression because if they're looking for buyers like you, and I'll show you the process, they're going to come in and look at your profile. And if it is not up to speed, um, you're not going to make a good first impression. Um, the other reason it's really important to pay attention to what I'm saying today, I've had people just blow me off, go, I've been in business 10 years. I, I don't need to do that. That's what you do when you start a business. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. I wish I had known this after 10 years in business uh, on one of my companies, because then I would have realized how bad my DSBS profile was. And none of the buyers out there could find me and see how great a work we were doing because we basically kept ourselves invisible. Um, but the other thing about this is when a buyer comes in, a federal buyer comes into DSBS and they look at you and they look at your profile, how you treat DSBS, their tool, the buyer's tool for finding sellers, the way you treat that with disdain or <laughs> dismissing it um, is going to reflect how you might treat their contracts, right? Um, you might be uh, treating DSBS as it's optional and they think to themselves, well, are you going to come in and treat our standard operating procedures as optional as well? If we say, hey, this is kind of the way we do business in this in the army. Yeah, yeah, but I got a better way. I got my way. It's like, wait, no, this is our process, right? Um, they might think that you're not procurement ready. When you don't fill out your profile completely, it, it, look, it makes you look like you're not procurement ready. So that makes you look like you're not project ready or contract award ready. How can you do a contract and award if you can't even fill out the profile that is where I come to find sellers like you, right? And the third thing on... Um, you know, how you go back, this goes back to my tip at the start is perception is reality. If you have incomplete responses, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but if your DSPS profile is incomplete or inadequate, then that's going to just make them wonder, are you just going to do the same kind of shortcuts on the contract? You know, when you're supposed to do certain documentation, are you going to look at it and go, ah, it's optional. It's not really the meat of the contract. It's like, no, there's a reason we need this. And I don't need you to necessarily understand why. I just need you to be compliant. And filling out your DSBS profile is being compliant with the way they do market research. You can choose not to do it and you're not going to get found. You can choose not to be compliant with all the things in a contract and you'll not be invited back to compete. Um, so let's talk about how do we get past that, right? The first thing is I want you to understand what a shortlist process is for, you know, because we're all at different levels in these trainings. But a shortlist process is basically, um, uh, you know, I get a whole bunch of options and I decide to keep these ones and get rid of these ones. And so you can think about it as if I need to hire somebody, I need to hire a new plumber. I get a bunch of resumes in for a plumber, let's say a software developer. <laughs> I get a bunch of resumes in for a software developer, right? I get a hundred of them and I start shortlisting them. Shortlisting means I, I look at it and I say, if it doesn't, if they don't have a college degree, um, I don't want to look at their resume anymore. So I look at it and I say, degree, go to the right, you know, no degree, go to the left. And that's, I do that, that's shortlisting. I'm taking all the people with college degrees and putting them on the right, all the ones without over here. I'll look at the ones that I have and go, do I have enough candidates with college degrees that gives me the impression that I'll probably be able to find somebody to hire in here? If yes, I'm going to turn back to this pile, pick it up, throw it in the trash. Literally, that's how much I'm paying. I'm going to pay attention, right? That's shortlisting. So now you're on the shortlist. Doesn't mean you have a job, right? I take that list and I put it in the middle again and I say, I want you to have at least three years experience or more. And I look and I go, no, no, yes, yes, no. And this is what we do for shortlisting, right? We're taking a bunch of people and whittling it down to the ones that, you know, a good enough pool. And so for market researching, what that means is they're looking for, and this is my numbers, but let's say 10 or 20 companies that they can reach out to and say, hey, you're women owned small businesses who are in this space. We'd like you to come talk to us in our requirements world or something. So they created a list of buyers they, or sellers they wanted to talk to. Um, so let me walk through the actual process and I'm gonna show you what the buyers do out there. Um, so the first thing, and I'm gonna tell you here really quick, and then I'm gonna show you in DSBS and kind of go back and forth between these two screens. So the first thing they might do is say, look, I, I just, I'm looking to see if there's 8 day firms who can do this particular type of work. Um, when they do that, the next thing they, they will put in is a keyword right? They could use a NAICS code, but NAICS codes are too broad. And so they use a keyword, for example, SharePoint. That's what I'll use today. They'll put it in and say, I'm looking for an 8A firm. Um, and now I'm looking for an 8A firm that says they do SharePoint. And when you um, show up in those, when, the, when you have that keyword in your profile, that means you'll get into the results. That's it. That's the first shortlist. 
There's a whole bunch of companies that did not use the word SharePoint. And so they're not in the results. First short list. Second list, and I'll show you this in a second, is the capability narrative. When they see the results, they'll also see the capability narrative. They'll begin to look at the narrative. And from that narrative, they will decide whether they want to click on your profile to learn more, right? And so that's the second short list. And then the final short list task that they do um, is that they look at the experience. At the very bottom of the profile, they will find whether you've been paid for this before. They will see your experience, right? And, though, and, and if you have experience, now you're on that uh, final short list. And that means they might reach out to you, right? Doesn't mean you get a contract, just means market research. This is how they go through that process. So let me show you this really quick. Um, so I'm just coming into DSBS. If, you, if you're not familiar with this tool, become familiar with this tool. This is one of the fundamental tools like FPDS and SAM and USA Spending that you must become good at. Um, so let's come down here. The first thing I said was uh, I want there to be an 8A firm, right? And so if you can't see the screen too well, don't worry about it. I'm, there's not a lot I'm going to show you here. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is saying find me only firms that are 8A certified. The next thing I'm going to do is scroll down a little bit to the specific nature of business section. It has keywords right here, and I'm going to type in SharePoint, right? And I'm hitting enter. When I hit enter, it gives me the results. So I said, show me 8A companies that say they do uh, SharePoint. And I got 59 companies that came back right here. If you can see that, right there are 59 companies. And this is the part I want you to see. And let me pause for one second. So the, the first thing I did is socioeconomic status of 8A. Second thing I did is a keyword search and I got 59 companies in the results. So 59 companies came in um, on the first short list. So the next thing I wanna do is look at the capability narrative and then I'm gonna look at the past performance. So if I come back here and, and I in no way am saying anything about any of these companies, but I'm not hiding the information because it's all public, but I'm coming through here and I wanna see uh, does, does something pop to me? Like right here, I just see keywords. So it's not really hitting me here. It says, we offer skilled professionals in the information technology, program management, diversified set of solutions. I'm not really reading SharePoint, right? Not that it's a bad thing, but I'm looking for a company that really does SharePoint. And my market research for today's example, I'm looking for, let's say 10 companies or something. And so I'm coming down. This is what a federal buyer does. They get these results just like you would in Google, and they have to decide, well, which ones of these companies do I click and move forward? So this next one has a whole bunch of keywords in there. I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at Kerasoft because they just sell a bunch of stuff. This next one, bunch of keywords, a uh, bunch of keywords. I'm not even looking at the company names. I'm looking down for somebody like right here. Here you go. So RD uh, delivers professional support services solutions in the areas of information technology, specializing in SharePoint modernization customization right? Let's just say I found 10 companies like Artie and I'm going to click on them. And so that gave me, uh, that put Artie on the second short list. Now we want to find out, is Artie going to get on the third short list? And the way I do that is look on whether Artie has been paid for this work. And so I'm going to come down here and look at Artie really quick. If I come all the way down here to the bottom and um, here it's showing that Artie has been paid for it. Uh, I can see different work that they've been doing, guiding principles. Um, here's SharePoint work. That was recently $5 million. That's enough for me to put them on the short list. I actually was thinking about, well, maybe not because they had this repair and calibration, but I actually didn't see this top one because I saw 2021 and I moved on. But the reality is they've had it recently enough um, and they're an 8A firm and, and they met my basic metrics that I defined. Let me come back here. So they passed performance. They had... Um, SharePoint experience, somebody paid them $5 million. That reduces my perceived risk in RD. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, because it looks like DHS has paid them before. This is not a proposal. I'm not looking for CPARS ratings. I'm just doing market research. So as a buyer that I just went through, I found RD by doing a socioeconomic set aside, doing keyword searches to find companies like RD that do SharePoint, he showed up in the results or she showed up in the results. And then looking at the narrative, the part I liked was it was a narrative, not just a bunch of keywords, but a narrative where they said, we do this stuff, but we specialize in SharePoint. I'm like, oh, you caught my attention. You're on the second short list. And then the final short list was the past performance. It tells me that somebody has paid them before, so I'm not going to be the first one doing it. If I had looked at Artie's profile just really quickly and come down here and, and saw um, no experience, 
then I would have just, you know, uh, moved on. I would have thought to myself, oh, they do SharePoint, but they haven't been paid for it yet. This is, I'm going to say this again in another slide, but this is the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that uh, small businesses make is they don't put their experience in the experience section. So a market researcher like me or Dave Waltz comes down and looks at this and then they don't see anything in there. So, okay, let me come back up here to my slides. Let's move on to the next slide. So that was the shortlist process. Hopefully it makes sense. It's the replays are always available so you can go back and watch that. Um, let's talk about the top mistakes that people make or what I call reasons for cart abandonment. And before I go too far into that, think about cart abandonment. If you go buy something on the web, if they create too much friction for you, at some point, even if you like that you know, tent or, or a new jacket or something, you're going through a process, something about their process or their information just makes you get, ah, I'm out of here and you close your browser. You know, and you see that pop-up window, wait, before you go, don't do this. Um, but the reality is there's certain things that we abandon carts for uh, that, that sellers could fix. And for you, the federal buyers have certain reasons for abandoning your cart or your LinkedIn profile that I want to share with you. So let's just start with um, understanding DSBS very quickly. Uh, the raw numbers of DSBS right now, which represents small businesses, there's 321,000 um, small businesses within there. Some of them are duplicate entities because, uh, you know, if you're hub zone, for example, or you have different facilities, some people will register both their facilities. But for the most part, you can think that there's 300,000 small businesses registered in the federal government at any given point. Um, of those 5,900, as of today, May or June 6th, 5th, 6th, something like that. Um, as of today, there's 5,900 8 a firms. And so remember the process for going through. Here's the mistakes that I see just on 8A small businesses. And I am telling you, and I've done this before, if I see it in 8As, then I see it in women-owned small business owner, uh, businesses, on SDBOs and um, hub zones, as well as small businesses across the board. These 8As actually represent the best numbers out there because the SBA works very closely with them. And we've been pushing for five years to get it. But look at these mistakes. 5,900 out of 5,900 8A companies, 2,000 of them don't accept credit cards. This is just a quick little field, just so I can show you right here. Here's Artie, and it says Artie accepts credit cards. That's all you have to do. When it says no, you're communicating to the government, I can't take credit cards. Not I don't take credit cards, I can't. And if you can't take credit cards, the only thing you can tell the government really quick is that, oh, that's probably too new. Let them subcontract in their smalls for a while. Let me move on to a different seller. They've just done card abandonment because you chose no instead of yes. By the way, no is the default when you signed up for Sam. Just go change it to yes. The next one is 4,600 out of 5,900 um, 8A companies have an unsecure or unreachable website. So unsecure means it doesn't begin with HTTPS. Can you imagine all this stuff going on? China just hacked the Navy a couple of weeks ago. Um, cyber attacks out there. There's all this CMMC going on with DOD that they want to push out. Civilian agencies are following suit. HTTPS secure is what S means. It's been around forever. And if it doesn't say S, then it's communicating me to me that your site is not secure. I'm abandoning the cart. I'm like, I'm out of here. There's enough sellers who have secure sites, right? Um, and then it's unreachable. The other reason is, and this is a huge issue because there's a bigger number of you who have unreachable sites. If your URL, and let me just use our friends here at Artie for a second. If Artie's URL, and let me click on that, is not exactly the same as it should be, then it errors out. And the reason this happened, you would think this is smart enough, but SBA tools are not smart enough. Um, and, and we can argue about it all day long, but who cares? Here's Artie, beautiful site. They got contract vehicles and other stuff. Clearly a mature procurement ready business, but because it doesn't say HTTPS, in their small business profile, there it errors out. And if it errors out like this, what do you think I'm going to do as a federal buyer? I'm just going to abandon the cart and go find another seller, right? No offense to Artie. Uh, and by the way, there's two URLs, so pay attention to both of them. One is updated in SAM, one is updated in DSBS. Um, the next one is they have no keywords. This is just huge. I just told you the way that the process happens for market research is the government buyer types in a keyword. Right. Type in SharePoint, cybersecurity, uh, Nintex, whatever. Thirteen hundred and fifty nine companies have none. And actually, if I go deeper in this, uh, more than half of the 8A firms have 
almost no keywords, meaning uh, you can have 2,500 characters for keywords and they're using a thousand or less, right? To me, that's almost none because you have all this uh, room to provide keywords to the government that they might use to search. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but you're not doing that. So um, that's huge, no keywords. And by the way, just showing you really quick with these guys, and I appreciate them letting me without permission be able to use them. But th this company looks procurement ready. So I would be telling the government they should work with them. But right here is the keyword field, right? They do a great job actually on this. And they do a um, pretty good job up here, which is the next one. Um, 1,700 companies don't even have a capability narrative. You saw how I found Artie. I was like, oh, look at these guys. They're squared away. They do IT work across the board, but we specialize in SharePoint, modernization, probably digital transformation. They're on my short list, right? So they have that capability narrative, but 1,700 companies, 8A companies don't. Are you one of them? Have you even taken the time to look, right? Can you imagine if buyers are coming in trying to find you and they come to your profile, but you don't have a narrative, so they're out, right? But if you had a narrative like Artie's, you'd be pulled in to the short list. And the last one is um, no technical capability narrative. Pretty much nobody has this. And let me just tell you what it is, because even Artie is falling down on this one. They have a great narrative here. I would tell them make it bigger because it's a thousand characters. But right below that is this field called special equipment material. And that field should be used as a technical capability narrative, meaning a little more jargon heavy, focused on answering the question, what do you do for the director of IT or the director of your program office? But that's 1000 characters that could allow you to be found. And they're not using it and they're not alone. 5,000 other 8A firms out of 5,900 are not using that field, which means you're not using all the keywords somebody might search for you. That means you're not coming up in a whole lot of search uh, results. Okay, I'm blowing through this really fast and I just wanna give you the last few tips here because um, they're really important. First one is, if you wanna maximize your visibility, go talk to your buyer, right? If I'm working with the DHS, or the Navy, um, if I want to work with them, I would pick up the phone and try to have a conversation can I get five minutes of your time? When you're doing searching for something like I do, like SharePoint, what kind of keywords do you go search for? How do you do your search? What keywords do you use? The second thing is um, if you have customers who are paying you for bullet number one, reach out and ask them, hey, if you're doing more market research, if you're gonna do market research on our um, recompete, what keywords are you using? What's the process you're searching for uh, sellers? And it, when you learn that, you can go back and make sure they're in your DSBS profile. How can you really know all the keywords if you're not talking to the very person who is entering them in, right? You can have pretty good guess. I can too. Uh, but talk to the market, talk to the buyers, and they will tell you. Okay, the next thing, the second tip on how to maximize your visibility is fully populate DSBS, right? With those keywords that you just learned from the um, customer as well as the ones you've learned from doing your research on the web or whatever. But make sure it's woven in. And let me give you an example of how vitally important this is. So I just grabbed this uh, term called Nintex, uh, and I'll show you in a second. But look at this. I said there's 300,000 businesses. I'm coming down here to keyword, and I'm going to type in Nintex. Nintex is a third-party uh, solution provider to Microsoft's SharePoint products. They do a lot of other things, but um, I could see somebody easily looking for uh, Nintex solutions. I made a lot of money in my last company selling Nintex solutions tied together with SharePoint, um, I just went and made sure they're still doing a lot of that. This is taking a minute, but you'll see in a second that only four companies out of 300,000 300, companies, look at this, out of 300,000 companies, only four come up. And the worst thing for me is three of, my, uh, three of the people who are in our community that I know do SharePoint is their core competency. They're not here, right? You know who you are because I know you're on today's training. <laughs> I'm not seeing you. And Nintex is one of those third party providers. It's kind of like if you sold elevators, uh, elevator services, things like that, and you didn't have Otis Elevator, the biggest manufacturer, didn't have their name in your profile so that if somebody searched for Otis maintenance or something, you would come up in the results. But look at this, 300,000 businesses. I didn't even search on socioeconomic. And so this is the entire small business pool. Only four companies so they, say they do Nintex. Imagine if you could have that same thing, right? Because a market researcher might go, you know what? Four is enough. <laughs> I'll just, I'll call those four. That's three bids. I'm good to go, right? And so um, that's a really important thing to be paying attention to. So the second step is make sure you use the keywords. Uh, the third one is have an elevator pitch for the capability narrative. So when I talked about that company, I was just showing you, they had a good narrative. 
that's an elevator pitch. Here's what I do, who I do it for, um, in order for them to achieve this while avoiding these risks. That kind of thing is an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is not a bunch of keywords. You don't step into an elevator and go Microsoft, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, SharePoint, Mintex, AppPoint. You just don't throw all the keywords, the whole elevator right up, right? And it, you just look crazy. Um, so in your capability narratives, go put your elevator pitch. And if you want help writing, I'll help you. Go to your website. Almost every single one of you have beautiful websites with good content. Just copy it, paste it. You're done in a few minutes. Um, the fourth one, get registered in the supplier portals that are out there. Large primes and federal agencies have supplier portals just like DSBS. And so sometimes they look there first, then go to DSBS. Sometimes their portals, like large companies like Boeing or something, go into DSBS and pull it out as DSBS and SAM into their own. And so make sure you're registered. Go to www.govconchamber.com, um, our website. You should see it on my profile. Somebody will put it in the chat. But on there, I have a directory and it has links to all these supplier portals. Just download it for free and, and go get yourself visible uh, with agencies and with large primes in their portals. And the last one is just go take your capability statement, put it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is searched by um, Google and by people within LinkedIn looking for companies like yours, a hub zone that does SharePoint, et cetera. And so you can put your LinkedIn, I mean, your capability statement on LinkedIn and it makes you more visible to buyers. And, and like Mark Amtower talks about, there's two plus million federal buyers on LinkedIn. So you're going to get found. All right. So I know I'm going through a fire hose uh, approach. It's what I do because um, I want to give you a lot of good actionable information. But walk away remembering this. Federal buyers need to see you if you want them to buy from you. If they, if they don't know you and they can't find you, how can they possibly buy, right? So help them by fixing those mistakes that I just said today. I gave you top, uh, top mistakes in DSPS and five tips. You can go back and watch the replay, but do those. It should take you really no more than a few hours to get done. It might take you over a course of a couple of days, but imagine what will happen if more buyers can find you. Hey, if you're getting value from the training, become a sustaining member today. Help us continue to make it available to everybody. At the very least, throw a thanks into the chat uh, to the team because they work hard to put this together. And the last thing is um, for the end of the fiscal year, the next three, four months here, uh, we've got room for five more customers on, and, and I'm looking for potentially 8A companies is what I really am looking to help uh, because there's just such a huge spending at the end of the year on 8A companies. But companies that are doing like 2 million or more, if you're looking to push up your game, uh, consider joining our uh, BD Accelerated Workshop. I can tell you more about it. Just ping me on LinkedIn, but it's for companies that already got some establishment uh, out there. All right. And then always government contracting. It is not a secret. Just like today, it's a process. I'll see you in the next training.